Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. My name is Linda Nickel and I want to welcome you to the class Abstract Art and Realism. Today we're going to look at some different categories of art to help you better understand um, those categories, maybe the definitions, the similarities, the differences. Um, and then we're going to go into um, some exercises, some art exercises. The categories that we're going to explore would be um, abstract art, realism, representational, and non-representational. And I'm going to show you a slideshow. I'm going to show you some different varieties of those types of art and do a little explanation with them so that, um, you know, my goal is that when you are looking for art, looking at art, maybe you're at a museum or you're somewhere else and it's, you don't understand it, um, it's abstract, maybe the, this will help you a little bit in understanding what's going on in those pieces of art. Um, you still may have your own preferences between these different categories and that's fine, but I want you to have a little better understanding. And then after that, we'll do the three exercises. So um, today is a, it, this is videoed and it's not live, not a live class, but I am in the chat. So if you do have questions, um, go ahead and put that in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. But for now, let's go ahead, if you've got your supplies ready, um, let's go ahead and get started and have some fun. I'm going to show you some slides of a variety of art images that fall in various categories such as realism, abstract, representational, and non-representational. I'll fill you in on the definition of these art terms to help you understand the differences. I don't want you to get hung up on definitions, but rather gain an understanding of the artist's intent, how to better view a variety of art, and perhaps be able to create your own art in these categories. Let's start off with realism. Realism is a category that's pretty self-explanatory. The painting or sculpture is realistic because it looks like something you would see in real life. The artist has captured the scene and as a viewer it leaves nothing for you to question. So realism, whether it's a portrait or a landscape or a still life, all of these are recognizable realistic objects. Another category is representational art, which refers to art that represents something, whether it be a landscape, still life, or a figure. The viewer can usually understand what the subject matter is, but the artist has taken liberties in how they choose to represent the subject. These pieces are recognizable, but the artist has still used some types of simplification or artistic license on how they represent the subject. Next is abstract art, which indicates a departure from reality. In other words, the artist started off with something in real life but simplified and made changes so that the object or scene is abstracted. There can be a wide range of abstract art from an artist making small changes um, to maybe larger simplifications and changes in the artwork. If you will notice, some of these pieces do not attempt to accurately describe a visual reality. This leads us to non-representational art. Non-representational art is another way to refer to, ab to abstract art, although there is a difference. Basically, non-representational art does not represent anything you can see around you. The artist will use form, shape, color, line, texture, and scale to express emotion or a feeling or a concept. As a viewer of non-representational art, you're free to create the narrative for yourself or experience the art through your own emotions and feelings. Sometimes when viewing abstract or non-representational art, we might say, I don't get it, or my kid could do that. When that happens, take a deeper look at the piece. First, analyze the colors used, the shapes and the lines and the textures. Do any of these things speak to you personally? Second, dig a little deeper and find out about the artist and the historic time frame that the art was created. These things can give you clues that in what the artist was maybe trying to say. Was the artist successful in getting their point across to the viewer even though you may or may not like it visually? These pieces, for me, mostly fall into the non-representational category because they represent something that you really don't see in the natural world. It's coming from the artist's feelings and emotions. Exercise 1, 12 dots. Okay, let's start off with something called the 12 dot um, exercise. And I'm going to say that this is going to be non-representational. 
Um, I pulled out some supplies that are that you would just have around the house. I mean, a pencil, um, different types of pencils, a Sharpie marker. I've got some markers, some Crayola markers that I have when my grandkids come over. Um, Crayolas. If you have paints or any other type of art materials, feel, feel free to bring those out. But I'm just trying to make this simple. Oh, I also have colored pencils. Um, what, what we're going to do, this is like I don't have any pre preconceived idea of what I'm doing. But I think what I'm going to do is start out just with a pencil. And I just want to make 12 dots somewhere on the page. So, let's see if you can see me here. Bloop, 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 bloop. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I want to do something to respond to those. Um, I could take a ruler or a straight edge and I could start just connecting them. Maybe I want to do something like that. I could use perhaps a curved line. I could say I want to do some straight lines and I'm actually going to make a shape. I'm going to connect this one to that one to that one to a curve. What I'm going to do next is work with a larger graphite tool, a graphite crayon, to help me make a thicker line. This is something called a lumber crayon, carbon black lumber crayon. Oh, I'm almost seeing like a number five in there somewhere. But that may be what will happen. You may see some things in here as you're drawing. You may decide to actually take this and turn it horizontal, depending on your paper, what size paper you have. You can turn it horizontal, you can turn it vertical. And by the way, I'm gonna show you the paper I'm using. Um, let me see if I can turn to the front page here. This is Strathmore Mixed Media Paper, and I love the way it will take dry media or wet media. Uh, you can glue collage papers onto it, and it doesn't ripple. It seems to hold its shape really well, so I just love this paper. As you can tell, I've connected my 12 dots, so I have what I like to refer to as a skeleton of my composition. So I'm going to take some of my tools, um, my pencils, markers, maybe um, crayons, and I'm going to start looking at how I can embellish this piece. What can I add to it? How can I build on top of the skeleton? I've added just a little bit to this um, skeleton 12-dot drawing. And one thing I was going to show you is if you're looking for um, different types of papers for collage papers, one thing I do is take the inside of junk mail envelopes and you can find beautiful patterns inside. And so sometimes I will use that as some of my collage papers. Um, you can also take things like, this is from a phone book, an old phone book. And so what I did was just um, roll some paint over it. It was like a scrap sheet that I had at some point. I'm going to tear this up and use it also, or cut into it. So what I'm going to do here is take glue stick. And I decided I'm going to put some of these um, collage pieces. Well, my glue stick is pretty dried up here. Okay. That's not a very good glue stick. I'm going to put that one down, and then I'm going to go over and get another glue stick. Okay, so Elmer's is not that great. At least that one wasn't, so I'm going to use this glue stick. Um, and I'm going to just put some of these pieces down. Now, once again, this is fun, it's plain, it's embellishing. I have no preconceived ideas. I have nothing I'm looking at. Um, I'm just playing. But it's kind of fun to play, and especially if you're, if you're an adult, you're getting an excuse to play. I decided I kind of wanted up in this area some kind of circle, so I'm going to put that there. And it's okay if I cover up these lines. It really is. That was just a starting point. I, um, 
took a crayon. I took the side of a crayon and I decided just to do a whole area in kind of the turquoise blue with that side of the crayon. This was a marker that I was just started to outline. And I'm almost looking down here and thinking, I'm gonna do the same thing with the side of that crayon, a different color. I'm trying to um, think in terms of maybe getting some some colors, some larger shapes of colors. But I don't want to be bound too much to the dots that I put on here and that skeleton below. I almost think I might come in, and I want you guys to work on this with what you're doing. Um, I might look at this and say, I just want to outline that circle with a Sharpie. Now keep in mind, if you use a Sharpie, it's not going to bleed when you, if you paint over or use any water, watercolors or whatever. If you use um, a Crayola marker and you decide to watercolor over it, and this may be what the effect you want, it will bleed. So I may try that in some places here. I think I'm going to put, just color that area in with a Crayola marker. So now let's take a look at what I've been doing on this piece. Um, I have added some more collage papers, and this was from the phone book. I decided just to tear strips and to violate some of these lines, to violate the color behind it, to overlap, in other words. And then, because I really like the torn texture, and there were other things in here that were cut, collage pieces are cut with a straight edge, I decided to... Um, I decided to use some of the same collage paper, but mimic a circle up here. Mimic, mimic this circle with another circle, but have it be a torn one. Then I'm going to take, um, I think this piece right here. This was from a magazine. This was just a piece of collage green that I liked that came from a magazine. Now I have to decide, what am I going to do with this? Um, I, I like the violating. I like the, of the different lines and the structure that was there. I like outlining some things and coloring some things in. Um, and I like the color choices. I'm enjoying the cool colors, the blues, the greens, some of the, some of the purple shades. So I'm going to work on it just a few minutes more and then come back to you. What I'm going to do now is, here are just simple watercolors. I want to maybe watercolor over this. Oh, the other thing I did was take a color pencil on this one. Instead of coloring in solid, I tried to make it scribbly. I'm trying to vary my mark making on this so it has a little bit of interest. So I'm going to add just some watercolor here. And like I said, this paper by Strathmore is, I think, really fun because it'll take watercolor really well without buckling too much. It's thick enough and yet you can draw on it and paint on it. Um, I almost think I want to add a little green over here. Maybe I'll mix a little blue green here. Okay. Ooh, maybe I'll go down here. Now, do you notice what I'm doing and how that's bubbling up? That's because if you've ever used watercolor over crayon, it's not going to bleed. Instead, the, wa the um, crayon will provide a resist for the watercolor. I'm going to make that blue. And I can always kind of dampen, um, blot this with a paper towel if I want to do that. And then I think I was saying that this is the Crayola watercolor. It's not, well, actually, it's water-based. It's a marker that's water-based. But look how when you add water to that, it bleeds. So any place, anywhere I've taken this purple, if you can see that, where I've taken the purple, any place I've done that, it will bleed. And I can make it into kind of a watercolor. This over here, I might do that. If you can see down here. I could come in and add words to it. This could be... Um, a collage piece in a in a journal, an art journal. 
that I could write in. I could add more things on top, keep layering it. This is one that I did earlier. On this one, I actually used stamping, stamp pads. I used watercolor as the underneath part to color areas in. Then I stamped, as you can see, on top of it. Um, I drew into it. Um, and then I took some collage pieces from a magazine and glued them on. So I hope you have fun doing this exercise. This can be something really complex or something very simple. Exercise 1, Part B. I'd like to take you a little farther into Exercise 1 with a Part B uh, component. First of all, when I did this one with the 12-dot pattern. I worked on um, patterning, I made stamps, I colored in solid shapes, but basically when you look at this, I'm just seeing that it's very tight. So I'm proposing that I would take this as a starting point and abstract it even further to go further with it. Maybe, what, what am I looking for in this? Maybe I'm looking for what colors I liked. Maybe I like the combination of the orange and the blue, the oranges and the blues and the yellow ochre colors. Um, maybe I want to do something with this in a, at a different angle. Maybe I want to turn it horizontal. Maybe I'm looking and thinking, I want this loosened up. I don't want a lot of straight angular lines. But by taking components of shape, like maybe I'm liking some ovals, I'm liking some circular shapes in here by taking components of shape, line, maybe some looseness, um, colors that I like. I'm going to try to turn this into something that is an abstraction of this non-representational piece. Um, so I'll get back with you. Let me work on this and then I'll be right back. Here's my take on abstracting my non-representational piece from exercise one. I retained some of the colors from the original piece like the oranges, blues, and yellow ochre. I pulled from that piece some of the curvilinear lines and the circle components. I drew free form type of lines that were different than the straight angular lines in the original. So in general, I abstracted what was already there uh, and loosened up with some, uh, some of the mark making and the paint applications. And here are the two pieces side by side. Here's the other piece I did in exercise one, and I decided to abstract this one as well. With this piece, I went ahead and turned it on its side to make it horizontal format. Then, as you can see, I kept some of the color schemes, uh, predominantly blues, and created some larger shapes of colors along with some sketchy, sensitive lines. And once again, side by side. Exercise two, mini collages. Okay, let's start on our second exercise. We're going to create many abstract collages. And we're going to kind of um, work the way Matisse did in, in some ways with his paper cutouts. And I have previously shown you some of his cutouts that he's done later in his career. But what I have here is just a variety of photos. And I've gotten some of these from... Uh, vacation pictures. Some of them are from magazines, uh, shots I've taken, or some of them I got off the, um, off the web. So just a collection. What I'm going to do is maybe choose one or two of these. I think I'm going to put these aside and maybe choose these two. And the materials you're going to need for this is pencil, tracing paper. If you do not have tracing paper, I'm thinking that wax paper, just get a little bit of wax paper. I think that will work and you can still cut into it, uh, be able to see through it to trace shapes and um, use it as a template. But I, right now I'm just going to use the tracing paper. Um, I'm going to mimic some of these shapes that I see. And when I put that tracing paper over the top, it's almost camouflaging what the real scene is. I can, I can still tell it's a landscape, but I also am seeing more fully some of the interesting shapes in here. So I'm going to trace them and I'm not trying to draw a landscape by any means. Um, here's one over here. It's interesting. That's a railing and I think this was a vacation picture. 
as I fell over the edge or something, I don't know. Here is some um, uh, shape right there that might be interesting. Now I'm going to move that one aside, and I'm, here's something totally different. Is uh, That was actually, that was not a flower in my backyard. That was from a magazine, I think. So I'm going to look in here and see what are some other shapes that I, just interesting shapes. Oh, let even try something like, let's see if you can see this, a negative space shape. I'm seeing one right here that I really am drawn to. So it doesn't have to be the actual object. It could be a shape that's the negative space. I might look at some more here. Um, oh, let's see. Here's an interesting one. Once again, negative shapes. I may look at that leaf or the, the petal shape and draw that. Okay, so now you can you can fill up your whole page if you want, but you've got a variety. I'm gonna I'm trying to go for a variety of shapes that aren't objects I've drawn. Once I've got that done, I'm going to pull out my um, collection of collage papers. And some of this, some of these papers, I painted on a piece of typing paper or a piece of copier paper. Some of them are colors that I got from magazines. Um, this is, once again, the, the uh, old phone book that had some uh, paint put on it inside of envelopes, magazines. I'm going to look at this, and I'm just going to pick out, choose a few colors I like. Oh, I, kinda, I do kind of like those two together. Um, oh, and construction paper. Grab some construction paper if you want to. I'm almost thinking. Maybe I like some of that. I, I almost want... Oh, I've got to put that one in there, too. So I think I'm going to go with those, those colors um, and kind of set this aside for a minute. My next step is to take some of these shapes and either do it to size or draw them a little bigger if you want to, but cut out some of these shapes out of these colors. One thing I do want to show you is how to trace these um, abstract shapes onto another colored piece of paper, your collage paper. There's different ways you can do that. You could take um, this paper. This is a transfer paper, um, and you can purchase that, and that will give you like a carbon, it's like a carbon paper. If you don't have that, I'm going to show you what happens when I lay this down. I've traced over it, lift it up, and if you can see right there, it gives me a nice little outline. If you don't have that, what I do sometimes is flip the paper over and then do some make my own little carbon paper by doing some um, graphite on the back of it. Then I can flip that over to, let's see, let's do it right here. Trace over. I can still see my initial, um, the beginning image but it's just got little scratch marks on the back from the graphite. But when I do that, it'll still trace it for me. So that's just a tip. I wanted to show you how to do that. And then those are the objects that you're going to use in your collages. Here's another tip. If I have drawn certain and traced certain abstract shapes in a um, the picture that I was looking at, like this one here, I like that shape, but I think it's kind of small for what I want to do, so I want to make it bigger. I am just going to come in and enlarge it by tracing around it, but extending the line out farther. Really simple. And then I know that that outside shape is what I want instead of a little inside shape. These are some pieces that I took with a viewfinder.
and I just put them on this page so you could see them. Um, you know, I've got all the different construction papers, whatever, but I've taken basically three of those shapes. So you could start out just saying, I want to take three of those abstract shapes that I drew, and I want to create some kind of composition. I want to put them down on the page in a pleasing way. Then I'm going to take this viewfinder, and I'm going to isolate areas, and I am going to have a composition that I like. This is what I'm going to refer to as um, just non-representational because I don't think there's anything in here that is recognizable. It didn't come from, uh, oh, I'm going to draw a sun or I'm going to um, draw a window. Now those shapes are in there but that's not exactly where my inspiration came from. My inspiration came from those abstract shapes breaking down a natural picture, something that was of the natural world, breaking that down into abstract shapes, arranging them how I want to on my page, and then using a viewfinder to actually come up with my composition. I've been showing you some viewfinders, so let me show you how to create one. Now I created this out of um, crescent board or just a heavy cardboard, but you just cut, you cut two L shapes. And if you don't have the white, you can cut two L shapes from, um, you know, just a, a used old file folder. When I cut those out, set that part aside, that's going to give me the two L shapes that I need. And what you're doing with these is you're trying to isolate areas that might even be more abstract. I'll give you an example. I came in on this one. I just drew a little line around it. I think that's kind of a cool little abstract design. I It's tiny, but I'm still getting the, the colors that I like, and I'm going to add to that. I may even decide that this is something that I want to create to scale in a larger size. So I took some of the abstract shapes that I had traced earlier that we worked on with the photograph, and cut them out, uh, and then I just randomly glued them onto a piece of paper. Um, my goal next is to actually take a viewfinder, the one that I was telling you about. Uh, I'm going to find a an area in here I like, and that I kind of like that. So that might be my my mini collage, my mini abstract collage. Then I can come in and do some more um, embellishing on that. Now, if you cut your pieces larger, I just did something really tiny, but if you cut your pieces larger and fill more of your page, then you're going to have more places to go with this viewfinder. You can go all over your um, piece of art to find little vignettes, little things that you like, whereas this one's it's pretty tiny, but I was just doing it as a sample. I can't get much smaller. I get teeny tiny. But in general, that's the idea of what you're going to do. I'm going to embellish this a little bit, draw around it, embellish it, and then I will show you what I come up with. So this is my final piece in the mini abstract collage exercise that we were doing. As you can tell, I added watercolor, I embellished with markers, um, I drew around shapes and added patterns. This is exercise three, upside down art. Okay, let's talk about exercise three. Um, this is where we're going to take a photo of something, choose one that you really like, and then try to figure out why am I choosing that photo? What do I like about it? Maybe what is the essence of that picture? Well, this one I chose, it reminds me of, you know, I have an attached memory to it. It was a hike we took in Colorado. Uh, I remember the, the warm, sunny day. 
Um, I love the rock uh, formation and the texture. I love seeing the the mountains going back in the distance. Um, I there was a little creek going through and the golden grasses with little tinges of kind of pinky oranges on them. So what appears to be not that dynamic of a picture, there's something that holds a special memory to me and there's certain things I like about it. Now what I want you to do is after you choose the picture, turn it upside down and when you turn something, let me pull it here where you can see it better, when you turn something upside down, those items are going to look like shapes rather than, oh there's a mountain, here's a rock formation, here's a creek, those are all going to look like shapes. And I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to draw this picture upside down. And I did this one where I just went in and I started looking at lines. I just let my pencil flow across the page. Uh, cloud formations, rock, mountains in the background. You know, maybe I need to put that there a little more. Okay, so once you get that part done, I want you to turn it around. You can turn it right side up. You could do it the uh, upside down, continually to do it upside down. But put this picture away. Put this picture away because you are not going to actually paint from that or draw from that. But you're going to look at these shapes in here. This is your piece of artwork and you can change this and abstract it any way you want to. Um, if I wanted that rock formation over there to be peachy pink, I could make it that. But if I do that, then I need to balance it with something else. If I want to um, simulate the rock formations, I could do that in different ways with different lines. I want you to think about what you liked about this. You can do this this uh, in painting with, with craft you know, different kinds of acrylics if you want. You could come in and use crayons or the colored pencils. Um, try to, I would say with this, try to get some color in there. I also look at value, which is the lights and darks in the picture. So I'm noticing this is darker, that's darker than this or this down here. So maybe be aware of value changes, but try not to look at that picture as in you're gonna paint the exact thing. Now I'm going to show you the finished product in just a, in a minute here. I'm also going to show you a piece that I have. Let's see, this is something that I think is interesting. Let's see if you can see that, okay. This was a photograph, and you can see it looks like a silhouette of buildings, um, sunset, there's water back there that's reflecting on the water. I found this piece that I didn't do, but I found it's another artist's work, and if I could remember the name of the artist, I would give them credit, but I just pulled this out of um, online because there was something about their rendition, their, their painting that's abstracted that reminded me of this photograph. It's not the exact dynamics, not the exact values, but yet I think because they picked up color, different colors in there, that... Um, you know, the blues, blues up here, that somehow echo this photograph. So I thought that was just kind of an interesting example. I'm going to post a picture now of my finished painting with the um, other photograph I was showing you. Here's the photo that we were working from for the upside down drawing. And here is the uh, a painting that was done that comes from that photograph, so it was abstracted. Side by side, you can see that there are lots of similarities between the original photograph and the final painting. You can tell that there are lots of similarities with shapes that were used, but the artist took liberties with simplifying the shapes and changing the color palette, as well as not putting much texture in the piece. Here's a bonus exercise I would like for you to work on. This is another exercise that I thought would be really fun to do. 
Um, to start off with, what you're looking at is a piece of paper, and I want you to take either masking tape uh, or blue painter's tape. Either one will work. Blue painter's tape usually has a lower tack to it, so when you pull this away, it won't rip your paper. Now, if all you have is the masking tape, then I would say make sure that you peel off a piece and then put it on a piece of fabric or touch it. Do something to take some of the tackiness away from it before you put it on the paper. So as you can see, I've got my paper tape down, and I just used a mixture of the masking tape and the, and the blue tape, and hopefully that will pull up without ripping the paper. Um, what you're going to work on today is something that would be not divided into four pieces, but rather the whole piece of paper. And I want you to go to a drawer maybe in your house where you have pencils, um, anything that's mark making. Uh, I've got some charcoal, I've got just regular pencil, I've got a Sharpie marker, here's a grease pencil. So I'm looking for you to find things that would be mark making, um, but not colored. So find things that make marks, thin marks, fat marks, um, any kind of marks. Here's, here's even a ballpoint pen. And what you're going to do with these is look at this whole um, piece of paper, and I want you just to start, pretend that you're just make some marks across the whole piece. Now, one thing I failed to mention, and this is what I want you to do first, find some music you like. Try some different types of music. Respond to the music. Remember earlier I was talking about artists that do non-representational. They're pulling something from within themselves, and it could be a response to some kind of external stimuli like music. And if you look at some of Kandinsky's paintings, he did respond to jazz. He was making those marks and the shapes that responded to how he was feeling when he heard a particular music. So with music playing, and right now I'm not going to turn on music, but you pick your own and come in and maybe, you know, just make some, make some big marks and I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at individual pieces, and I'm not trying to draw a picture, but I'm responding to the music. And here's some little pen marks. Oh, that is almost out of ink. Um, I could come in with um, even a pencil, tiny, tiny marks versus fat marks. Um, I could come in with the side of something, like maybe that's a mark. So I'm going to keep working on this, and then we'll come back, and I will show you what to do next. As you can see, I have drawn lots and lots of lines. And notice how I overlapped. I drew straight across that tape, pretending that it wasn't even there. So what I'm going to do next, and I want you to go and get, this will require probably acrylic paint would work the best. I want you to have a white, a black, and I chose a yellow, kind of a deep yellow. So a white, a black, and one color. And sometimes when you mix these colors, when I mean, you probably need a little bit of container container of water and a brush um, it you don't have to use these colors just straight for instance as you kind of mix them I take a little bit in here you can see I'm mixing a little bit of that that's almost like an olive green and you know that with white it's going to come out with different colors but what I'm going to do is go through here and I'm gonna just say um, wow I might block some of this out. I may decide some of it's white. I'm not sure what I'm doing because right now, even though you're not hearing the, the music, I should be having music on. And I'm going to go through and maybe block some things out. Maybe... Um, Mix a little color with it. Where am I going to put this? How, how am I going to 
make this whole piece something that I like. I want to make sure I have some darks, that I have some lights, and I have some medium values. That it's all going to come from the black, the white, and a color. That could be any color. I chose yellow. So I'm going to work on this a little bit, and then I will come back and show you what I did. Here's another tip when painting. This can be with any kind of acrylic or oils, but what I like to do is I can use my brush to paint with, or I can also take an old credit card. And um, if you'll notice, I can smear paint across, and sometimes with the pressure, it will allow certain things to show through, which can be really interesting. If you don't have the old credit card, Here's just a piece of um, cardboard, and I've at different times used that. So there are different ways to apply paint. I'm going to come back with these that I have finished and show you what I've come up with. Okay, here is the big reveal. I finally have worked on this, and I've painted. I have um, added some more marks to it on top of the dried paint drawn into it. Um, I put a variety of the yellows, mixed it in to make greens, and the dark value and the light value. So I'm kind of looking at this and thinking, I want to peel off the tape and see what will happen. And you can watch along as I do this. Sometimes this is the best part, just peeling off tape. So after I tore the tape away, and you can see on this, I wanted to show you this piece right here, <laughs> the, the masking tape I used was too sticky and it peeled the paper. So that's why I'm saying um, that your blue painter's tape is probably the best. But after I've pulled the tape away, this kind of shows you what we were working on, and it becomes four individual pieces that all respond to each other, almost like a series. But what I did was not try to create some kind of visual image, but just respond to the music by making lines, mixing colors, uh, painting over some of the lines that were already there, and it, it's non-representational. Now that it's a four, four individual pieces, you could come in and do some more drawing and more detail work in it if that's, what you, if that's what you would like to do. So there's that one piece that we worked on. This is another one with the same color format that I uh, previously worked on. And same, same thing. I tried to get a variety of values, your darks, your lights, but it was all one piece of paper and then I ended up taking the tape off and um, you end up with four quadrants, four individual pieces. I hope you have fun doing this. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and will continue to be creative and to explore art.